Okay, let's get started. Hi, I'm Bill, and if this is the first time dropping into the channel, welcome. Well, I'm uh, six nights away from the Golden State Star Party, and I'm still trying to decide which camera to use. I have identified uh, what my targets are, and so I thought I'd like to share with you my current thinking and get feedback from those of you that may have two cameras or have some thoughts on how I should proceed for these uh, four nights under Bordel One Skies. And just to uh, share with you, I have a one-shot color camera, the ASI 533MC Pro, and I have a monochrome camera, the ASI 294MM Pro. So these are the two cameras I have to work with, and I'm trying to decide which way to go. Right now, I'm leaning towards the ASI 533MC Pro, uh, but I've not made a final decision, and here's where you can help me push me in one direction or the other, either confirm my decision, my de you know, decision or whatever. So your feedback is um, is helpful. And again, uh, looking at my target list: North America Nebula, the Elephants uh, Trunk Nebula, and the uh, Veil Nebula. I spent a little bit of time just looking in uh, Solarium, and uh, you know. Framing-wise, if we look at uh, the uh, Westvale Nebula, here is my uh, Square 533MC Pro uh, framing, and I can't quite fit that whole area in the frame. Here's what the uh, 294 looks like. I can get more of the nebulosity into one view, but I also know that there's the concept of mosaics and that uh, I could shoot multiple panels and then merge those panels but I've not done that before and I'm trying to figure out how much I want to put on the plate uh, overall goal is to get successful quality data from this uh, four nights under border one skies and you know, so again, your feedback could be helpful. Here's kind of how I'm approaching it with the 533 and why I think it's the way to go. I, um, I knew sooner or later, I knew when I purchased the camera with its one inch sensor, that sooner or later I was going to have to step into the realm of mosaics. I was aware of mosaics. I know that, uh, Nighttime Imaging and Astronomy, also known as NINA, uh, has the uh, ability to frame and set up multiple panels uh, for, for an imager. And so I said, okay, it's, it's time for me to uh, dig into that. And the first thing I did is I went into the NINA help, and I went into advanced topics, and I went into uh, framing assistant. And... I guess this is the opportunity. Many of you uh, commented last year that there was an opportunity for me to optimize my framing. Uh, to be, you know, as you saw, as a first year beginner, I kind of ignored framing. So, you know, I appreciated that feedback that I had an opportunity to rotate my tube and to get better alignment, better framing. This is the year to do it. Uh, so I went in. To look at the framing assistant uh, information and I felt it was uh, pretty good and then there was the uh, the section on doing uh, a mosaic uh, framing a mosaic and I started to read that and I said okay why not give it a shot and so a couple of nights ago I went out in the backyard to see if I could sec successfully do an end-to-end -end con configuration in Nina to produce a two panel mosaic and so here's what I did I just thought I'd share this is not a tutorial I first thing I did is I went into the equipment and I saw that there's a manual rotator so I connected it and when you do that there's this uh, option here well not an option but when rotation is requested a notification will pop up to rotate manually so that that was key number one for me then I went into Sky Atlas and I found the object that I had interested interest in and then I uh, set it for the framing assistant and this was the view I got and again with the 533 uh, field of view sensor field of view 
Um, it wasn't going to give me all the nebulosity that I wanted to get uh, in an image. So I said, okay, this is where the mosaic comes in. So I added a frame. And so there was a two panel mosaic and I kind of positioned it. And this little dot in the center is important. So I kind of positioned it, uh, framed the two panels the way I wanted it. And I said, okay, that all looks good. Maybe I uh, I'll go the other way actually. All right, and I said, okay, that looks good. And then there was an option, and uh, I also chose 20% overlap. So we could go 10%, 20%, I guess we could go higher. But I chose 20% as a starting point. I don't know, not knowing what I'm doing, I said, okay, 20% looks like enough overlap if I do a little bit of cropping. So maybe I'm, uh, I'm good there. And then if I had all my equipment connected, there would be an option here to take an image with the camera and start a plate solve to uh, retrieve uh, the current camera orientation. And um, so I did that, and then it um, the uh, rotation was then would then be set uh, for framing. And uh, what I did then is I went into uh, add target to sequence. So I put together a sequence. The key thing is. It's a two-panel se sequence. There's a section here for panel one, and then there is a section here for panel two. The key thing is this command, to me anyway, uh, to uh, slew center and rotate. And when that command is present, when it comes time to rotate, what I saw was a, was a pop-up window uh, overlay, and it showed direction to rotate in, and number of degrees to rotate. Now I had, you know, to rotate it manually and it took me a couple of attempts to get the rotation that it was saying I needed to rotate, but I got there. And uh, once I got that rotation, it was uh, solved and centered. And so that was good. And then the sequence uh, kicked in. Uh, when it came time to do panel number two, it did a slew center and rotate and I didn't have to do any further rotation so however I rotated it for panel one it was good for uh, panel two now this started to give me some confidence at least for a two panel display um, I now know how to set it up in Nina to capture data and here again is if there's something I'm missing or uh, you know, this is a good opportunity to share if I'm overlooking something, uh, but um, I think that I uh, collected some good data. Now, I limited the data to just 15 light frames for each panel of 180 seconds long. It was, uh, I wasn't trying to image uh, something necessarily. I was trying to work through the flow of the process within Nina to shoot a two-panel mosaic of NGC 6960 and uh, this is uh, this is kind of the result that I got. So what you see here is panel one and panel two. I, I, I've rotated them 90 degrees but um, and again I think you if you're not familiar with this you can see uh, the overlap area there so I've got some more work to uh, finalize this, but I felt not only do I need to know how to set up to do a mosaic uh, within Nina and capture good quality data, I need to be able to process it when I got back, because otherwise I'd be have all this data and I couldn't bring it all together into a unified view. And you know, I question you know what good would that be? So would it really be just simpler to use my 294? field of view to shoot these targets knowing that I've got one panel for each target in a sense and I can process it the way I've already processed it within PixInsight. But fortunately I have this Insight PixInsight book, uh, Insight PixInsight book and there's a good number of pages here on how to accomplish it and I also found a video that worked for me on YouTube. I'll put a link to it in the description and um, 
between this book and that video, it gave me confidence. If I collect the data, I'll have a reasonable shot of bringing it uh, all together. So this is kind of where I'm at. This is my current state of uh, knowledge, both uh, from creating uh, the sequence for a mosaic in Nina, and I've got a lot more as a first-year uh, PixInsight user to bring this panel together into a unified panel, but I think I've got a clue and uh, could have some success. So anyway, based upon your experiences, um, those that have done this before, if I'm overlooking something, if you think I should stick with the 294 versus trying to do a mosaic with the 533, you know, let me know your thoughts. I'm looking at it, the 533 is a really good camera. It's newer tech. Um, I should just use it, in particular under Border One Skies, and see what I get. It's challenging me to use it to create mosaics, and I'm okay with that. Uh, why not? Why not go down that road? On the other hand, would I have a higher degree of success using a camera I'm already familiar with, the 294, not have to shoot a mosaic, and just image uh, a single panel, in a sense, with Impix Insight, which I already know how to do, having uh, processed the Pelican Nebula and the Heart Nebula, and uh, Andromeda Galaxy. So, you know, this is where I'm at. I got sick night to go. I'll figure it out. If you got any feedback, uh, I'm totally open to uh, hearing uh, what you recommend. All right, that's about it. But I did want to call out, some of you have found the affiliate marketing links that I have in all my videos. There's uh, affiliate marketing links for Amazon. I see that some of you have been buying the books off of those affiliate marketing links. So uh, since you found them, and there's some value to you. I thought I would mention it to others that they might want to check out the links that I have in my videos for uh, Amazon. And I also have one for OPT if you purchase from OPT. And if you use my link to purchase, to take you to OPT to purchase something, I get affiliate marketing credit for that as well. Just thought I'd mention that. All right. Looking forward to any feedback you might have. I have a few days yet before I make the final decision. I know which way I'm leaning but I'm totally open to your input. And in particular, if I'm overlooking anything, uh, that could be very valuable to me. Other than that, clear skies. Till next time.